Linear drumming is the act of playing between the hands and the feet. We're playing our patterns and our phrases split between the hands and the feet and usually only one drum plays at a time. Modulation involves moving something rhythmically. So we're going to be taking some linear phrases today and moving them through different subdivisions to change the rhythm and this is going to give some really interesting polyrhythmic effects. The concepts we're talking about today will work nicely with any phrases, not just linear. I'm doing linear phrases today because I'm especially interested in linear phrases. And I'm going to be taking specifically phrases from the book Linear Freedom. Uh, chapter 1, the 16th note phrases to begin with, and then we'll see how this can expand outwards later on. To start with, let's take a simple linear phrase. I'm going to use one of the first phrases from chapter one of Linear Freedom, which is a four note phrase, right, kick, right, left. As always, your first job is to get comfortable playing the phrase in its basic form. So taking the basic phrase there and orchestrating it around the drums, most people hearing that because it's a four note phrase would hear that in a four note rhythm. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. And this is really where the beauty of the modulation discussed today uh, happens, comes into its own because that expectation of a four note phrase being played as a four note rhythm gets broken, gets subverted. And that can make for some, as we've said, really interesting polyrhythmics. We expect a four note phrase to be on the beat, one E and a, two E and a. So by changing the subdivision to a different one, such as triplets, 16th note triplets, quintuplets, if you're feeling brave, we subvert that expectation and we create this dislocation between the phrase we're hearing and the beat. So, to highlight what I mean, I'm going to start quite simply. I'm going to take this phrase and play it as triplets instead. I will keep time with my foot on the hi-hat, try and keep time with that beat, and try and count these as triplets. There was one bar. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and... Uh... Now, how can we only made it three times round there? Well, if we think about triplets in a bar, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, we have 12 notes to play with. We're playing a four note phrase, and of course, 12 divided by four is three. We have a 12 note limit because we are playing them as triplets in a bar of four, four, one and a two and a three and a four and a. So of course, your first job now is to start counting this. You don't need a drum for this. You can do this just on a pad uh, between your hands and the feet, but we're trying to feel this phrase not as 16th notes, but as triplets. This is done by counting it. One and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and. Uh. If you're new to this sort of thing, a metronome is your best friend and try and do this while keeping time with something like your hi-hat to give yourself that sense of pulse. It's very important that you are able to internally retain that pulse in your head while you're doing this because there's no good playing these complex rhythmic phrases if you get lost. Once you start to get a little bit more comfortable counting these, we can start taking them to the kit. For now, orchestration wise, it might be a good idea to just keep both of your hands on the same drum so you can still hear the phrase as a self-contained unit, but still counting it as triplets. So the subdivision is how many times we play per beat evenly. A 16th note subdivision means we are playing four times per beat evenly. One E and a, two E and a. Our new triplet subdivision means we are playing this three times evenly per beat. One and a, two and a. And this is where we get this dislocation. Once this is starting to get familiar, a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more internalized, you can have a go at varying the orchestration a little bit, taking those hands around the drums more freely. One and a, two and a, three and a, four and a. A 
little bit faster now. If you are getting to the point now where you can keep track of the time, now it's time to start thinking in larger phrases. Now, a four note phrase as a three note subdivision will fit neatly into a bar of four, four, one under, two under, three under, four under. As we've discussed, we will be able to play that phrase three times per bar. But now let's try extending that so we're playing four bars at a time and we can start giving it some context. Because we're working with triplets here, let's put this into a jazz context, and we can essentially trade fours with ourselves. Now, a little uh, mechanical pitfall here, if we're playing jazz, usually we would expect that hi-hat to be on two and four, rather than all four beats of the bar, so just make sure you tackle that uh, coordination challenge if it arises for you. But we're keeping that hi-hat on two and four, four bars of time, and then four bars taking this phrase around the drums as triplets. So we'll start nice and slowly, four bars of time, four bars using that phrase as a solo. A little faster this time. And suddenly our simple four note phrase here is starting to work for us. It's starting to sound really quite interesting and it gives us a lot of opportunity to really be creative with both the dynamics and the orchestration we choose. Now, if you're interested in this sort of thing specifically, I did a video recently on a linear jazz soloing, link in the description. So check that out to look at more applications of these linear phrases specifically as jazz. I'm going to move on now and start looking at this in a slightly different vein. We're going to now switch up the subdivision to this time work in 16th note triplets, sextuplets. These work the same as triplets, but double, right? So whereas a triplet is three notes per beat, a sextuplet is six notes per beat. One and a one and a two and a two and a three and a three and a four and a four and a. Obviously, if the tempo is the same, triplets are twice as fast, sorry, uh, sextuplets are twice as fast as triplets. Again, because we're getting a little bit complex now rhythmically, we always start by counting this through one and a, one and a, two and a, two and a, three and a, three and a, four and a, four and a. Because of the beauty of mathematics, again, we do resolve neatly after one bar. If we're playing 16th note triplets per bar, uh, per beat, we have 6, 12, 18, 24 notes this time in the bar. Well, if we do 24 divided by our four note phrase, we of course get 6, 6, 12, 18, 24. So this time we get double the number of phrases. In triplets, we were getting to play it three times per bar. Now as sextuplets, we're getting it six times per bar. We don't need to worry too much about the maths, but if we get analytical, it can help with that understanding a little bit. So we are playing six notes per beat, one and a one and a two and a two and a, and our four note phrase is going to occur six times in one bar of four four. As always, start slowly, give yourself time on the hi-hat. Three and a three and a four and a four and a.
To help you hear that, I'm going to accent the first note of each phrase. You should hear six accents. Three and a, three and a, four and a, four and a. Having that accent there gives us this really cool polyrhythm. Let's move that accent around the drums now. This time, let's take the orchestration so both hands are moving together around the drums. Three and a three and a four and a four and a... Now we can split the hand on two surfaces. I will alternate between these two drums and the two rack toms. Three and a three and a four and a four and a... This time orchestrating freely around the drums. Three and a three and a four and a four and a... Now it's really important that we start thinking about the dynamics of these phrases as well. We can't just play these full whack all the time as if we were doing some gospel chops. Because that really can get a little bit stale, so it's, it's really interesting and really important that we start to consider some accents within these phrases to give them some dynamic contrast and a bit of life as well. We want these phrases to breathe. Uh, so this time I'm going to orchestrate freely again, but start applying some accents within these phrases. sound really cool. So now we can start to be a little bit more bold with this. We have so far taken a single four note phrase. What if we start combining these phrases together? For those of you that own linear freedom, I'm now going to work on a phrase from page 21, which is the first coordination study, uh, combination study. I'm just going to take the first bar of that. For those of you without the book, don't worry, I will put the phrase on screen. It is four individual phrases and the phrase looks like this. So as always, it's important we get comfortable with the mechanics first. So let's just take it around the drums with some simple orchestration as 16th notes. Three and a, four e and a.
Now, a long phrase like this, it starts to get quite tricky and quite complicated. We are going to jump straight up to 16th note triplet. So we're feeling this phrase, one and a one and a two and a two and a three and a three and a four and a four and a. So rhythmically, we're getting a little bit complicated now. We are playing a bar of sextuplets. This contains 24 notes, six, 12, 18, 24. We are playing a phrase that consists of four four note phrases each containing four notes, four, eight, 12, 16. So we are playing a phrase that is 16 notes long in a bar that is 24 notes long. So of course it doesn't go, we have to roll over into a second bar. Let's think about the maths and multiply upwards. If we take our bar of sextuplets and double it, we have two bars containing 48 notes in total. If we take our 16 note phrase and we play it twice, we have played 32 notes. If we play it a third time, we have reached our 48 note target. So I know it's a little bit complicated. And again, it's not vital that you understand this, but I do recommend it. If we are playing a 16 note phrase as sextuplets, we are going to play it three times over the course of two bars. Phew, let's make sure we're counting this properly. I'm going to skip ahead and start orchestrating this around the drums one and a one and a two and a two and a three and a three and a four and a four and a four. There were my two bars, there were my 48 notes. Try and count the hi hat three and a three and a four and a four and a. I did a video uh, all about taking these phrases and doing them in a sort of gospel chop style, uh, link in the description below, if you are more interested in how we can make these phrases sound a little bit more like gospel chops, which is very similar to what we've just played. But I really wanted to get across the concept for you today of taking a linear phrase, or indeed any phrase, and modulating it through different subdivisions to look at the polyrhythmic effect. So you can use this um, to make your fills a little bit more interesting, as I mentioned, one way to do this might be to shorten your fill and insert a little bit of this modulation. So let's say you only wanted to do a drum fill for the second half of your bar, beats three and four, one and two and fill, fill, one and two and three, four. We can, again, let's say, let's use sextuplets again. So we're going one and two and three and a three and a four and a four and a one, two, three and a three and a four and a four and a. We've now got 12 notes to play with and this will work quite nicely with a four note phrase. So I will stick with a more simple one this time. Right, left, right, kick. In our 12 available notes, we're going to get to play this four times, sorry, three times. Four, eight, 12. One and a, one and a, two and a, two and a. There are our two beats of 16th note triplets. So let's use this just as a simple fill on beats three and four of a simple groove. Three and four and. And again, you start to get this really dramatic effect, which is really cool. So I would encourage you to start thinking more about the subdivisions you're using when you're playing your phrases. I've discussed it specifically with regards to linear drumming today, because that's a big interest of mine, but feel free to try this with any phrase you're working with. If you want to explore linear drumming further, check out the book Linear Freedom, which is available now. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks very much.